some of y'all, thank you, Holy Spirit, I feel this so strong. Some of y'all are white knuckling stuff that God has given you and you won't release it because you don't actually believe he can give you something better. The job was God given 12 years ago. Man. But for the last three, he's been telling you the season's up. You haven't left. The grace is lifted. The same. You, it's so frustrating every day you walk in, but because God gave it to you. What if you grew out of it? I'm grateful for the clothes that my mama gave me when I was 12. <laughs> Smart. I don't still have them. I outgrew those clothes. Right. I'm grateful for the position I was given when I was a young adult pastor. It was cool at 30. It looked weird at 48. Right. So some things that are God, no, no, thank you, Holy Spirit. Everything that is God given is seasonal. Everything. Everything. Everything, even marriage. There's an expiration date. Death. Even that, so everything on this side of heaven has an expiration date. Right. But some of us are so like, it can't get no better than this. That you actually won't let it go and God's like, I'm trying to give you something else. Right. Do you know, God, do you know Jesus has been our chief intercessor longer than he was our chief apostle? Man. 4,000 years of prophecy, 30 years of life in obscurity, for a three and a half year ministry, for them to him just sit next to his dad and pray for us for the next 2,000 something years till the trumpet blows and he comes back to get us. What? And you still want to go off being an elder? You got to wear this stuff like a loose garment. Right. You got to be ready to change clothes. Holy Spirit, what are we doing now? And I love this season. You still here? If you here, I'm here. But if you leave, I leave. I love doing this pod. Let me tell, let him leave. See what happened. Right. You will be, where is Tim? <laughs> he didn't even say bye. I, I'll have a little more grace than that, but I, I, I go as he goes. And, and when, you, when, when, you can, when you can be open to that, you can, you can be ready for what's new. Soho Bible study doesn't even become a thought if you're still fighting for what you had. We're not sitting here having this conversation. Right. If you still feel like you got to go scratch and claw for what you had, you would never have seen this. You would have never met them. You would have never, what are we talking about? So I want everybody in this room to do like this. And I want you to see everything that he's giving you right now. Just picture it in those hands. Whatever he's giving you, that's what he's entrusted to you. The money in your bank account, the Marriage you have, your singleness, your what, what your the, the job, the career, the seat, whatever that, whatever this stuff is in your hand. And I want to know, do you love what he gave you more than the giver? I want you to honestly ask yourself the question: Do I love his gifts more than the giver that gave them? If the answer is yes, then just be like, Lord, my bad. You're better than the gift. Like, we ain't got to boo-hoo and cry for three hours. Repent means to change your mind about the way you think. It ain't that deep. I was thinking this way. Never mind. I now think this way. <laughs> I thought my way was good. It's like, it's your way. Amen. That's repentance. That's it. It's over. It's, a, it's not a big old deal. You ain't got to cry for three hours. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm <laughs> tired of people saying they sorry and still won't change Man. Man. 
it's just not that deep. It don't have. It doesn't have to be that deep. But if you would say like, Lord, I just I love the stuff you give me, but not more than you. So you can switch out, replace, take away, add whatever you want to do, because it's all yours. When I tell you, you're going to live hands-free for the rest of your life. Man. Because you won't be white-knuckling this stuff. So my encouragement is for you to just embrace where you are now, but never turn your season into an idol. If I fell in love with being a pastor and I romanticized that and call me pastor and I'm the lead pastor of a church, then I would actually think podcasting is a demotion. And I would be offended with him. Man, freaking podcaster. I was a pastor of a church once. Now I'm just a freaking podcaster. <laughs> Being a lead pastor always had an expiration date. Whether it was seven years, 17 years, or 27 years, it, had, it was going to have an expiration date. All of our seasons has an expiration date. You ain't going to be hot forever. <laughs> you can inject, you can tuck, you can uplift. <laughs> you can plump up, I promise you. When it all, all falls down. <laughs> When it all... It's going to fall down. <laughs> you live to be 100 and see if somebody going to still call you a baddie. <laughs> a ba <laughs> Ain't no 100-year-old baddies, fam. I'm sorry. <laughs> Except for Sarah. Sarah was a... Sarah was a 100-year-old bad baddie. <laughs> Abraham had to lie about her when, he, when she was 90. Yeah. She was bad. <laughs> But you're not gonna be you're not gonna be that dope. <laughs> Somebody right now is like, I could do all things. <laughs> <laughs> Looking in the mirror, words of affirmation. <laughs> we all have a season. Right. And so you rock that season. And and then and, and you learn to be content with whatever that season is.